All right, we have a diesel Land Cruiser. Not the diesels we're used to getting here in the US, the 12 valve HDT T engines. This is an HDJ81 and it's the FT, so a 24 valve diesel engine. I just picked it up, drove it back from Arizona, from Scottsdale, and it took one tank of gas, folks. What a truck. This is my fifth 80. I have three right now, so I will post a comparison video of this diesel compared to an FZJ, a 1995. This is a 96. The engine being the main, main difference, diesel versus gas. You get twice the miles per fill up with the diesel. So don't smash that button, tread lightly. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and soon I will have my comparison video between the two. But just real quick on this one, um, phenomenal. I've always loved 80 series and I've had the V8s, the 100s and the 200s and I actually, on my channel, I compare an 80 series to a 100. So if you're in the market for both, you wanna check that to make sure you know what you wanna get. I might help you in your decision. And I also compare a 62, you know, 60 series and a 80. And I do have two other diesels. So I fell in love with diesels this year. I got a 1HZ and an and a HZJ73. Check that video. I will compare it to the engine to this. And I have an HJ61 with the 12HT engine. So I kind of progressively went up in power. I skipped the 12 valve 80 series and went straight to a 24. And this could quite frankly be the first to make it to US shores because with the pandemic, a lot of cargo ships just sat. Um, off the Long Beach docks waiting to be unloaded so this took some time and actually a guy out of Arizona did all the import did everything so I'll post a video giving more details about this what that whole auction process is in Japan because it's quite regulated if you buy privately you never know what you're gonna get but when you buy through the auction they have inspectors they they make they validate the vehicles and this is 117,000 miles for some reason in Japan they just don't put a ton of miles on it not like here in the US where it's vast and you travel state to state and like I said one tank of gas with some to spare for 440 miles coming from Scottsdale I couldn't believe it and this thing's like a freight train folks if you if you've had an FZJ not not an FJ with that 3FE engine but an FZJ with a 212 24 valve gas powered you know going up hills it's it could be a struggle sometimes you know heavy heavy truck and uh you know 212 horsepower this is a freight train i was cruising 75 miles an hour 2200 rpms like effortless and just going straight up i know my fzj going up through uh, palm springs where all the the, the wind turbines are yeah, my FZJ would kick down a gear. This just held its gear. I think it tried to kick down once, and I just backed off to about 65 miles an hour. Freight train, folks. So if you're in the market, you might want to consider getting a diesel. My dogs love it. Look at that solid window in the back. No split. But all Land Cruisers are JDM. So all Land Cruisers are built in Japan. Well, Asterix. I think in Brazil they did the 40 series for a little longer. Um, but all the ones we got here in the US, Japan built, so well built, built to last 25 years. And that was 25 years ago. Ask them again, they'd part, probably put an asterisk and say, oh, we overshot the runway, try 50 years. Um, so I will do a comparison, the FZJ compared to this HDJ. So check that. And you know, if you're in the market, the time to get one of these is now, because they are gonna go up in price. And let me tell you, Australians with their diesel 80s, you can't pry it from their cold dead hands. They ain't gonna give those up. In fact, I think we're gonna start competing with them for the Japanese models. But I'll go over specs. So a lot of people don't know how many of these were made. I'll post a video on that. I'll, actually, I'll post a video just talking about 80s and where the market's going, how many Japan got, how many were worldwide built from 90 to 97, and how many we got here in the US. But this is a clean example, I gotta say. I love it. Um, I have two that are like fully built with all the goodies on it. I don't know how much I'll build this. I think it just looks clean like this. Maybe not even tint those windows, just leave them clear. Because in the US we had pre-tinted, like people added tint, but they were like kind of that mirror glass. I like that clear. And you know what's crazy? 
you know, low mile FZJs have gone for, for quite a bit. I think 136,000 was an example on that. And I did buy this from Bring a Trailer, believe it or not. But if you remember that Joe Rogan, um, Jonathan Ward built TLC 4x4 or TLC Land Cruiser build was uh, from a 450, I think, in 1995. They repainted it, you know, rotisserie, like you know, redid the whole thing. 200 grand. I don't know, man. 200 grand. You can pick one of these up in the high 20s, low 30s, clean, low miles, but with a diesel, right? Because it's all about getting that power. And yes, an LS engine is going to be faster than this, zero to 60. But, you know, when you're off roading, it's all about torque. And with this truck, the torque is phenomenal. Like I said, like a freight train. That's where you get all your power. I even think because I'm at sea level here in California, or, you know, five, zero to 500 feet. I think that um, I will put 35s on this without re-gearing because with a, with a gas, you'd probably have to re-gear when you go 35s, 37s for sure. But with a diesel, because yeah, with the diesel, I would uh, not re-gear because that low torque, all that power at the low end, starting at like, I don't know, 12, 1400 RPMs, it's already in the 250 range, carries through all the way up to 4,000 um, RPMs. The torque is there to turn those bigger wheels. So I'm gonna put 35s, we'll see how that works out. I got some cool bead locker fuels I can put on this. From the Christmas Cruiser, if you've seen my channel, I'm just gonna powder coat them, gunmetal gray and a black bead locker. But yeah, if you like Land Cruisers, subscribe. Check out the comparisons if you're you know, on the fence between a 100 or an 80. Even if you like a 100 or a 470 or a 200, 570, I compare them all. I just, my next project is to compare a diesel 80 to a gas powered 80. But check it out, it's all about Land Cruisers. And I am gonna post kind of like a 80 series, where's the market going, like what's the value? Um, Cause I've just bought three of them in the last year. So I can kind of share with you my thoughts because I think the market's only going up. And again, you know, as far as how many were produced, so how many are out there, right? Because they don't make these anymore, as you know. And how many Japan has and how many will come to the U.S. market. Because Australia, like I say, they are not going to give up any of their cruisers. In fact, they need more. They love their land cruisers and down under might. All right, well, thanks for checking this out. Subscribe um, and hit that notification bell so when I post some of the uh, comparison videos, you will see that right away. Oh yeah, last but not least, I'm gonna post a video on how I got this for free with a little asterisk, but check that out. Something to consider if you're in the market for an 80. All right, well, happy trails, peace out, and thanks for watching.